Hi, I'm Bill Sebastian, director of QWERTY. And I'm Dana Pupkin, and I play Zoe Rosillo at QWERTY. And we're here at the AMC Theaters Kansas City Film Fest. third feature, as I understand. Uh, what were your other two features uh, like previously? Yeah, so the, the first one I did was called Irish American Ninja. Um, I made that one while I was still in college. I started it when I, when I was 19, finished it two years later. Um, all these movies take a long time to do. Uh, but uh, yeah, that one um, was a mockumentary about a burnt out uh, ninja, an unemployed ninja. And uh, it came out on DVD uh, many years later in 2005. Um, around that same time when that was coming out, I did my second feature, which was called Midlothia, which was a small town, very intimate, uh, character-driven drama, very different from my, um, my action mockumentary that I had <laughs> previously done. I really made a conscious effort to do something different. Um, and uh, that movie also came out on DVD in 2008. Uh, then we shot this movie in 2010, and it's been two, a two-year road to get here to our world premiere. Did you get into filmmaking? Was this a, was it a dream of yours, or is it something that you just sort of I think steered into? Like I think in the back of my head, I I did always want to make movies, be in movies, specifically be in movies. I, I started acting when I was 12 years old. Um, that I, I never really thought that people studied film in order to work in film. I thought you know, someone just discovered you or whatever. So I went to college and was literally flipping through the, um, the book to find a minor, because um, I was going to be an engineer. And I saw cinema, and I, I kind of laughed. And I guess I was just very naive. I don't know why I laughed. I just thought, really? Movies? People study that? That's Sign me up, you know? So it started off as my minor, and I, I took one class. And, while I was in that class, I, I saw a little flyer posted on a, a tree that said, um, enter the first annual SMU Film Festival. And I was like, well, I don't have anything to enter. I'd better make something. So I, I borrowed my father's uh, VHS camera, and we, we went out and we shot a 40-minute version of what became my first feature film. We, we, we later reshot it, elongated it, and made a feature film out of it. But it started off as this 40-minute mockumentary about a ninja, um, that was my first thing I did when I was uh, 18 years old. Um, and after I did that and took my first film class, I was just, I was just hooked. And, you know, I dropped the engineering and decided to make movies. Okay. Um, Dana, did you always want to be an actress, or is it something that you also fell into? Like, no, I always wanted to do it. Um, when I was, I did my first play when I was seven years old. I played a toad. It's very glamorous. And then I was hooked, and that was pretty much it for me. Um, but when I, I did plays through high school and that sort of thing, but when I got to college, I decided that theater didn't feel like a very practical major for me. And I was trying to be practical. So I majored in uh, TV radio broadcasting with an emphasis on producing. And after college, I spent many years producing television, working on like biography television, that sort of thing. Um, and simultaneously in Los Angeles, I was working on my acting career, so I had an agent going out and that sort of thing. And when um, my commercials started to pick up and I was booking a lot of commercials, I felt that maybe it was time to make the official transition from producing to acting, which is what I've been working at for a few years now. And, uh, and on the side, I have a jewelry business, so I'm trying to spend my days very creatively. <laughs> On to, I guess, with this movie, uh, Cordy, what was the genesis of it? I guess you said that you're not, I mean, the project didn't, ori didn't originate with you, so. No, it didn't. Um, so Juliet McDaniel wrote the script, um, well, it must have been around 2004. Uh, she ended up winning a screenplay competition at the Waterfront Film Festival in 2005. I met Juliet in 2007, and Juliet and Matt, uh, Matt Dykeman, who produced the film, uh, they asked me to come on as the producer, uh, I'm sorry, as director of, of, of QWERTY. Um, and I mentioned in the Q&A, but they spent a while trying to raise proper funds to really, really do it up right, so to speak. Um, and the, the funds never materialized. Um, and eventually we just said, well, we're tired of sitting around and waiting. Let's 
let's just do this. So um, I traveled to Chicago, uh, did a little pre-production, um, did some local casting there, uh, brought Dana along, actually. I had to audition for the role of Zoe, and uh, I really, yeah. it, it, people might think that because I happen to be married to Bill, who directed it, that that was just an easy handoff to the role to me, and that was totally not the case. I actually had to audition, and, and I, it was nice to earn the part, you know, I felt really good about it. Well, and it's a strong way to go. <laughs> it's true, and some people some people um, are very surprised when they hear that. But it was it was a pretty calculated decision to, to to have Dana go through the auditions because when you're a director, there's a lot of things you have to make executive decisions on, and sometimes that sometimes you know you just end up disagreeing with people about some of those decisions. Mm -hmm. I didn't want one of the biggest major decisions that happens right off the bat before you start filming to be a disagreement with anyone else who was making the film. So the other producers who were involved were all there in the casting sessions. And I made sure that you know I wasn't steamrolling this decision over anybody. Um, so that they, you know, later when things got stressful, as independent filmmaking always does, there, there wasn't any sort of you know, bad blood about that decision. And I'm really glad that everyone agreed. You know, the I first think round of, were actually, yeah. The first round of Dwelling happened first, right where I was, a, I was the director of photography on a web series that Dana was, was in. So we were on set together prior to making this film, uh, but I hadn't had a chance to direct her until after we did this film, which was our first, and then after that, uh, four episodes of that same web series, I got to direct. So that was, that was fun. Although, yeah. wait, your character wasn't in those, so I'm going to talk about that. I don't know. That's right. Your character wasn't in those <laughs> right, episodes. No, he wasn't in the ones that he directed. Yeah. So no, we yeah. haven't really. He this worked part of the web series, but we didn't work together then. So this was our our <laughs> debut of working together. It was, it, it was a leap and of faith. And we're still married. Yeah, yes. yeah. You know. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> I know you hear about people who end up doing this, working creatively or trying to work creatively together, and, and they find that they, you know, are better off doing their own thing, having their own careers be separate than having their marriage be their own thing. And I, I'm happy, it came out really jumbled. But I'm very happy to know that we work well together creatively as well as romantically. Making, making films is like, is like, making films on a small budget is like having, everyone on set has a common enemy, which is, you know, getting the film done and all the forces that are keeping you from getting it done. Mm -hmm. So that helps, you know, whatever it's. You're in it together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it, may, it gets stressful, that's for sure. And, and sometimes, uh, you know, people don't always get along. Say that. Dave Wagonar was our director of photography, but he definitely was in place um, before I came on board. I, coming from LA to Chicago to film, I certainly didn't have, uh, you know, a cache of uh, crew members that I, you know, knew in town to insist on or anything like that. But I was very, very happy working with uh, with Dave. And obviously the, the product came out really well as well. Um, I, I actually ran uh, camera in almost every scene as well because we often had uh, multiple cameras um, going at the same time. Um, but we, you know, we worked we worked together on making our shots and, and stuff like that. We did the lighting, the, all of the interior lighting. So we shot on these these newfangled digital SLR cameras um, that so many people are using these days. Um, we used the 7D. I uh, had a couple of them on set, uh, sometimes three, and uh, sometimes when we had to go out and, and just guerrilla style some things, just one. Um, but yeah, how difficult was it to get uh, Scrabble to allow you the rights to use, uh, I guess, to use their brand, especially since you're such a, a low budget, a low budget film? Um, it was difficult in that it just took a long time to get a response. And then once we got a hold of the right person, things did sort of move along. So it was it was good. It was a lesson in persevering and, and not giving up. I mean, this was the movie was about Scrabble, so we wouldn't be here today if we couldn't get that, <laughs> the rights to that. So um, it took a long time and a lot of persistence and patience. Well, I think um, you know, also in in the end, we really just got permission to use their their product. There's no further partnership right. per se. Than that, just um, allowing us to make the movie a low-budget movie. Yes, it'd be very, very difficult to do it. But 
like Dana said, it, it's about Scrabble, but it's really actually not. And that I think helped mm -hmm. because you know these board games these days they're they're making movies out of board games, uh, Battleship and yeah. and uh, and Monopoly, and clearly we were we were pretty conscious of that and thinking, man, I hope they're not making a Scrabble movie because if they are, we're screwed. Um, but the thing is, they they can still make their Scrabble movie if they if they decide because this movie is really about two two characters and Scrabble plays a big part in the plot, but it's not it's not what the movie's about. It's a, it's a love story. It's a subplot. Yeah. And plus, let me, you don't have to have for this like. <laughs> yeah, I, it would be hard to incorporate aliens in, into a Scrabble movie. We're awesome. Mm, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> <laughs> they come to our planet to play Scrabble. <laughs> oh, nice. Well, did you have, like, I guess uh, with the competition, it's a real competition, which did they act like technical advisors or? We, we had one person who really helped us out from the National Scrabble Association. He was very instrumental and helpful and encouraging to us. And then there were some local people in Los Angeles who we would contact when we needed a little guidance as far as board play, you know, word plays on the board and that sort of thing. Um, but the truth is also, we took a lot of creative liberty with how we portrayed the tournament. Um, yeah. Yes, the tournament happens. Um, yes, people win money. No, there aren't live commentators. <laughs> No, there the there isn't necessarily television coverage, at least not live television coverage. And uh, most of them, there's actually documentaries, um, at least a couple documentaries about national Scrabble championships. Yeah. And um, of course, we watched them to, to see what we needed to learn. And one of the things I learned is that if we make it look like that, we don't have a very exciting movie because it, it basically happens in a big, you know, open ballroom with just tables set up and there isn't really a, a, an audience. So the audience was a, was a departure from reality um, and, you know, we, we added the commentators and, and yeah, I think we made it a, a lot of drama. fun, but we, and, and hopefully we didn't offend anyone who actually does competitive Scrabble when they watch this movie by our creative license, but I think we made it fun for, for a general audience to watch. Thank you. I wish you lots of luck with the, with the film. Thank you. Thanks so much.